So I went to a comic show yesterday. I said, maybe I'd pick up a couple comics. So I picked up a couple of comics. <laughs> Let's take a look at them up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Reminder, we come to you with videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, so if you like the content that we're putting out here, please uh, subscribe, like, leave a comment below. Um, also follow us on the other socials, Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics. On whatnot, Bronzeville underscore comics, where we do... Um, Sales every Monday night at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, next week, I'm anticipating having some slabs available. And also, um, follow us on, uh, follow my eBay store, link in the description. So, um, on Sunday, I decided to go to Collector Fest in Wayne, New Jersey. Um, just uh, spend the morning there, um, go to a show. Streetside Anthony was set up, Erod was set up. It was more of a um, comic slash toy show. Um, so they had a lot of people with pops and games and all that sort of stuff. Cards. Um, but me, I'm only looking for comic books. I, I could be tempted by like, you know, classic toys. Tempted, but, you know, I, I, I don't have enough room. I, they, they, I, I have to sort through these comics. And for some reason, my wife put like two DVDs down on my desk. Um, Anyway, um, so I went to Collector Fest and I picked up a few things. Um, and I, anyone who is there that I met, I know people watch the channel. I appreciate coming up and saying hello. Um, your support for the channel is always appreciated. So that was really cool. Um, so let's take a look at what we got. So the first vendor I went to were a couple of guys um, who are fans of the channel. So I'd like to thank them for... Um, the, the books I got there, I got this um, Batman Family um, <clears throat> with a, with Batwoman. She made a little bit of a resurgence um, in the Bronze Age in the Batman Family books, uh, whereas she was mostly seen in the early Silver Age and not since then. I'm low-key trying to pick up this run. I also got, and this is the second copy I picked up of this recently, is uh, Spectacular Spider-Man 100, uh, the third um, part of the kind of spot trilogy and always picking up since Zatanna. Uh, I believe that's a Gray Morrow cover. This is Zatanna special. Yeah, Gray Morrow. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, always like picking that book up. Uh, at, I guess this was uh, Street Side Anthony. I picked up this. This, uh, uh, Black Adam number one. Everything Black Adam is hot right now. I'm going to put it over here because that's going to be a giveaway on uh, whatnot. Power Pack number one. I'm kind of low-key speculating on Power Pack. Um, I think I've said this before. I think they'd make a good Disney Plus series because very family-friendly. This personal collection book, Lone Wolf and Cub number one. Um, I have almost a complete series. I think I'm missing a couple issues of that. Um, if you haven't seen, if you're not familiar with the series, the first comics in the 1980s did a series where they reprinted the manga from Japan. There's also a series of, I think there were five movies made in the early 1970s that are really fantastic. Um, and then this Mignola cover, Batgirl special. Um, you know, we know that Batgirl is uh, coming. Warner Brothers Discovery hasn't canceled that movie. So uh, that's coming. This I picked up. The, there was another vendor. Uh, this was, they had price books. This is one of the few price books I picked up. Um, the, which was uh, Darth Vader number one. This is the first appearance of Bra Black Chrysanthemum, um, who we did see in the Book of Boba Fett series. This is a special edition. It was a five below reprint with the um, BA cover. Um, that seems to still fetch good value. Now, this same vendor, there was the first time they were selling, and they had, by, even by the time I got there, they had a lot of good stuff. Um, because also, I'm more of a DC guy, and if you can spec on DC, there's a lot of stuff that people aren't going to see. So they had a bunch of books that were $3 each, 4 for 10 So I picked up a stack there. This classic Brian Boland cover of Justice League of America. Um, Infinity Inc., number one. We all know their first appearance is in um, All-Star Squadron 25. This is their first solo title. And 
Nuclon here was later renamed Adam Smasher. That's a character we're going to see in the Black Adam film. This, and this is a pretty nice shape. I often see this beat up. This X-Men Teen Titans book, that's a nice book to have. Um, All-Star Squadron number one. I always pick up 100 pages when I see them cheap. Um, Superboy 205 with Legion of Superheroes. I'm pretty sure I had this back in the day uh, when I was a kid. Always great reads. And I'm trying to collect all the 100 pagers that DC did. And Street Side's like, yeah, you got to see that vendor. They have some of the 100 pagers. Um, Fury of Firestorm 28, first appearance of Slipknot. Now, Slipknot was a character that was in the D David Ayer. Um, I'm going to do something. I got to take this out of the bag because they. I'm going to take this book out of the bag because there's like, the tape is kind of uh, sticky. And throw that away. It's like a brown, brown backer board. Um, yeah, this this was a collection you could kind of tell what they, they collected. Um, X-Men 256. Psylocke in her uh, classic costume for the first time. Another 100-pager that I think I had as a kid. Detective Comics. What number is this? 443. Uh, team Up with Manhunter. That's awesome. This, you got to know your DC, Detective Comics, number 647. This is the first appearance of the spoiler, Stephanie Brown. She's the daughter of Clue Master, and later on, she becomes both Robin and Batgirl in different times. Um, New Teen Titans 16, first appearance, this insert, first appearance of Captain Carrot. Mint Hunter would like that. Then I just picked up a couple of random Green Lantern books. I'm trying to fill in on the cheap... The, uh, the Green Lantern run. Again, some of these books, a lot of them were not bagged and bordered. You can see this has a corner crease. I might have some of these books already, but for this price. Um, I picked this up. Actually, there were two books in here. I didn't even realize that. Karate Kid number two and three. I just got a collection with some Karate Kids. I'm going to try to finish this run. It's a short run. Um, and I'm also collecting, low-key collecting these Bicentennial um, issues. And they were numbered. DC had, they had this banner at the top. This is from 1976. It's an August cover date, but I believe probably in the Indicia, it's probably July, August, 1976. This, I couldn't believe. This This was, no, these were in the dollar bin. That Yeah, that was the last of the $3 books. The rest of these were were in the dollar bin. They had dollar bins underneath the table, and there was great stuff. To, X-Men 150. Dollar. Nice. Um, this, eh, just picked up New Teen Titans 4. New Teen Titans Justice League. Look at that George Press cover. Oh, come on. Gotta love that. Dollar, even though it's in bad shape. Um, 80 page giant number 19, I believe this is. It's a Batman book. And it is, a, you know, this isn't the worst um, Silver Age Squarebound book I've seen. This one's in a little bit worse shape. I do have this in my PC, but this is Justice League of America 65, the second appearance of Red Tornado. Um, Justice League 193, insert with the first appearance of the All-Star Squadron, although some of these books are not in the condition. I'm thinking this is a little thin. Yep. <laughs> what someone did back in the day, and when you're digging through dollar bins, you know, what are you going to lose? This is really interesting. The All-Star Squadron insert was pulled out. That is really weird. Fortunately, it wasn't DC Comics Presents 26. Um, but, okay, it doesn't have the first appearance of the All-Star Squadron. It's missing the first appearance of the All-Star Squadron. Star Slayer number three. This is the second appearance of the Rocketeer. This is it's on the back cover. Dave Stevens' awesomeness. This, um, All-Star Comics 70. This is the second full appearance of Huntress. She had a cameo in 69, and then she was in a DC Superstars Secret Origins book that came out the same week. Weapon X 74. Is this the second of the series? That's for a dollar. This book I have a bunch of. It's Marvel 2 and 1, number 78. And the significance of this book, it has Wonder Man, and of course, Wonder Man is hot. But it's like the first in comics appearance of Dungeons and Dragons. It has this little advertisement in a story mode. So. That's that. This, you know, the inserts here. This is Fury of Firestorm number six. Um, and it has, if you look up here, it has an insert. And it, I, I can tell it's thick enough that the insert's still there. It has an insert for Masters of the Universe. 
Uh, this was after, I think, the DC Comics Presents issue and before the miniseries. Number seven, the first appearance of Plastique. Plastique is one of these characters, you know, um, as a DC collector compared to Marvel. You know, Marvel, you get all of these kind of random comics that uh, spike because, you know, Arthur Harrow appears in it or the Silver Scarab or um, Clandestine's first appearance. All these things that, you know, kind of move from like a, a $1 to $5 book to a $20 to $50 book overnight because a character appears even briefly um, or even is mentioned in an MCU property. I have so many DC comics that almost any character from the last 40 years that appears, I have the book. A um, couple more. These were dollar Green Lantern books. This one, I, I when I took a look at it, when I got at home, I was disappointed because I've been trying to pick up copies of this. But I didn't realize just pulling it out of the dollar bin quickly that it had this big chunk missing. This is the first appearance of Karen Beecher, who later becomes Bumblebee, who's the first African-American female hero um, in DC Comics. And then there were three of these. Um, and the, the cover um, doesn't really... Um, I, so there are three of these. This is DC Sampler number three. What's the significance of this? Well, this it's a preview book that DC put out. And it predates the Swamp Thing book. It's the first appearance right there of John Constantine. So for a dollar, I figured pick those up. Um, I went to... Oh, wait, no, this is the one I'm going to do. I'm going to wait. I went to another dealer, and um, the one book I picked up was this uh, Justice. Um, this is Justice Society, right? Justice Society of America, number twenty-three, with this Alex Ross Black Adam cover. That's that's a giveaway. I'm not going to give away the Black Adam one in this giveaway. Um, another hundred pager from another vendor, Brave and the Bold, uh, one fifteen. I know I, this is another book I know I had as a kid. Um, and the thing about these these hundred pages, I really enjoy them as a kid, because what they would do is when they were part um, of the runs in title, they would have a new story. So the new story here, um, this is a Jim Aparo cover, uh, is a Batman Adam team up, as you would get in a regular issue of the Brave and the Bold. And then they throw in um, some other uh, reprints. So. Uh, Challengers of the Unknown Story. This is, I don't know if it's both parts or just one part of the uh, Dr. Fate Hour Man team up from Showcase that also included Green Lantern Solomon Grundy. You see Viking Prince and there's extras. There are crossword puzzles and all sorts of stuff. Then I picked, you, you can't let Doom covers go by. That was three bucks. And then Erod, I picked a few books out of his. He goes, Oh, you got my good books again. Um, these are all high grade. So I have to see what might be. This probably isn't. Um, but with the show coming up, I picked up Sandman number two. Number three. And number five. Okay. So Sandman is coming out on Netflix, I think, at the beginning of August is going to be the release date. I'm really looking forward to that program. I think it's going to be amazing. And I've said this before. Um, a lot of people complain about DC Comics, but let's look at recent history, right? So far this year, we've had the Batman and the Peacemaker TV series. Both have been outstanding. Um, now, obviously, everything isn't as interconnected as we would like it to be, as it is with, with the MCU. Um, and it seems as though the new team in charge, now that there's been the merger with Discovery, want to kind of follow in Marvel's lead, like slip into their 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 draft and, you know, um, do something similar. But I think what they're going to do is they're going to have different uh, kind of different universes. They're going to let Matt and Reeves do his stuff with Batman characters. Um, and then we'll see uh, what happens in, uh, you know, as we build off pro primarily Black Adam right now. But you also go back, you had... A couple of years ago, the Watchmen TV series on HBO Max, which was phenomenal. It was a continuation of the show, of the uh, comic book, um, won multiple Emmy Awards. That was amazing. So 
you know, I think DC has produced some amazing stuff. The consistency hasn't been there. And of course, people liked Wonder Woman, more than Wonder Woman 1984, Shazam, Aquaman. All those movies did reasonably well. It's just the interconnectedness was missing that we, we see from Marvel. So um, James Gunn did a little bit of that in Peacemaker, especially at the, uh, at the end of the, the series. Um, and he had those allusions to other characters like Doll Man and Matter Eater, La- Matter Eater Lad and Batmite uh, that were fun, but really didn't move the needle on any comic books. Uh, so the but the Peacemaker books did have movement. Um, the, the books associated with that series, for instance, New Teen Titans Annual Number Two, the first appearance of Vigilante, that book spiked quite a bit. So anyway, let me know what you think of my haul from Collector Fest. I think I spent two hundred five dollars for everything uh, there, and um, I think I got some pretty good values, uh, some books that I'm going to keep. <clears throat> And then I have to look to see if I'm going to get some books graded or not. So anyway, you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.